All right, this testimony started what, around 1 a.m. in the morning. My mother had called me or texted me or something. My brother had a heart attack and he was in the hospital in Columbia, South Carolina. So I said, say no more, let's go. Now at this time, I couldn't see that good at night. And I didn't like driving that night. She didn't like driving that night either, which left me stuck with the driving. But anyway, we're riding to um, Columbia, South Carolina, two hour drive. I could barely see y'all. I'm telling you the truth. I'm talking about on the interstate. There was curves that I almost missed on the interstate because even the lines on the ground was faded. They didn't do something about that. The lines on the ground was faded. So I was going, actually going straight at one point when there was a turn and that could have got ugly. But the beautiful thing about it is there was no traffic out there. So I remember saying to the Lord, I'm going to show you how awesome God is. Now, I remember saying to the Lord, God, please, God, please send somebody because I can't see. I needed a car to ride behind. I, I, I wanted a car to ride behind us. And there was a truck way down I-20. I'm talking about that thing were way down. Now, I'm doing the speed limit. I promise you, I'm doing the speed limit. I could barely see, but I'm doing the speed limit. There's a truck way down I-20. I'm doing the speed limit. And the truck catches up with us. He gets by us, slows down, gets in front of us, and ride a long way in front of us. I said, look at God. Come on, I don't believe in coincidences. I said, look at God. So we rode behind him for about an hour. Then he took a turn. He took all, he got off the interstate. And I was like, oh, Lord. I was like, God. And I'm, I'm telling this story, no exaggeration. I'm like, God, I need you to do it again. Then there was a truck way down I-20. Again, this uh, again, I promise you, again, a truck is way down I-20. I'm doing a speed limit. He catches up. He gets next to us, he slows down, he passes us, and gets in front of us. Now, he's going fast. He did like the first truck did. They're going fast, but when they get in front of us, they slow down and, go, and start going the speed limit. Now, we're riding behind him, and he takes us all the way there. He takes us all the way there. I'm telling you, I just thank God. He takes us all the way there because I could barely see I could barely see she over here, not off in the drive, but that's all right. That's my mother, you know, but anyway, we get to the hospital and my brother's all right. He all right. Matter of fact, the hospital, I couldn't even go up and see him at first because somebody had a gun in the hospital. They had the whole hospital locked down. So they finally let me up and see him and, and my mother stayed for a while. We spent the night, Billy. My mother, we um, stayed the night, went to sleep there, and everything worked out. My brother was all right. And um, then we left. We left and we got back on I-20 and we started having car trouble. The car was overheating, put some water in, and we rolled a little bit. Car was overheating. We rode a little bit, car was overheating, so finally we decided to get off the interstate and and call somebody to come. Call somebody from the town we was living in, two hours away, that could bring a truck and tow this car. And and that's what we did. I'ma tell y'all, and around this time, this is a part I didn't mention, around this time I was like, God, I need to know that you're with me. Not that I was in, I wasn't in nothing. I wasn't in sin. I wasn't in nothing. But I was just like things I felt like should be taking place and things I should be seeing in my life. I felt like I wasn't seeing it. Like there's no visible sign that the Lord is with me besides the air I breathe. 
So remember this now. This is key. Remember this. I wanted the Lord to show me that he was with me. And really, he, he did with the trucks, but he went even further. So I went to see my brother. Money is low. Money is low. Matter of fact, I don't think there is no money. If I remember this, that part of the story correctly, I don't think there is no money. So now we park at this the waffle, this waffle house in Columbia. And our ride is coming. We gave them the location. Now we gotta wait two hours. Then my mother went to sit inside the waffle house. But then the waffle house started look, this is all gone. This is all gone. Watch this. The waffle house started filling up. So now we decide before they put us out, like, let's just go outside. Let's go outside and sit in the, in the car because eventually they're going to tell us to leave anyway. The Wi-Fi is filling up. They need these tables. And watch this. God wanted us outside. Now we outside. We're sitting there. And we're sitting there for a while. It's a two-hour drive, but I think we waited like three hours for our ride. Our ride took about three hours. And three or four hours. We're sitting there for a while. And I, I, I've never seen this. I'm staring. I'm pointing. Most of everywhere I go, I back into places. I don't, so I could be ready to get out. You know, when I get ready to leave. And I'm staring at the Waffle House, face the Waffle House. I never saw this man come out the door. Never saw him come out the door. Uh, I only seen him pull off in his truck. When he pulled off in his truck, he went by us looking. So I wave. When people staring down, people down here stare. They stare at you. You can't do that in New York. You can't stare at people in New York and you're asking for problems. But people down here stare at you. So when people stare I wave, I be like, I speak. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? I make them speak. Don't just stare at me. I'm going to make you speak. So I'm, I waved and he rolled and he turned around. So I said to my mother, I wonder if he coming back over here. He come back. Now, my mother, she in a back seat. She got in the back seat to stretch out a little bit and get comfortable. And he comes. He like, y'all right? I said, yeah. We got somebody. We got somebody coming to help. He said, okay. Now, watch this, y'all. <laughs> he asked me something that just totally threw me off and blew my mind. He says, if you could ask God for anything right now, what would it be? Look, I am thrown, there's a lot of things I could ask God for right now, but I was so thrown off by that. Like, so you know what I said, y'all? It was hot out there. So I said, and we didn't want to keep the car running. You know, of course we didn't want to keep the car running. The car running hot, so we can keep it running for air. So it's hot out there, you know, sweating. So I said, a drink of water. So he gets out the car. So I'm thinking he going in his trunk to get get me a bottle of water out of the cooler. So I said to my mother, I said, Ma, you want you, you want a bottle of water too? She like, uh huh, uh huh. So he comes over. Matter of fact, I'm sitting in the passenger seat in the front. I was doing all the driving, but since she in the back, I sat in the passenger seat to stretch out. He comes over. He peels a bunch of 20s and he says, here, buy all the water you want. Then he says, God just wants you to know that he loves you. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Stories like this I've only heard of. Now, I, I got a bunch of testimonies where people gave me money, but I'm talking about where like they came with money and a message. Because let me tell you something. The words he gave me was better than the money he gave me. God just wants you to know that he loves you. Gave me the money. And he left. He got back in his truck and he left. And I was like, man, look at God. I appreciated those words more than I appreciated the money. And I'm being honest with you. 
I was broke. I was broke. But those words was powerful to me. And they still are. God just wants you to know. He loves you. And I'm telling you that today. God just wants you to know. You. The viewer. You watching right now. That he loves you.